Hi, this is Dr. Perry Carpenter. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to join me on today's video. Today's video is about the physical examination for the assessment of tarsal tunnel syndrome. Tarsal tunnel syndrome. And I assume by now that you've had a chance to review video number one, uh, which is the philosophy and anatomy review uh, of the structures involved with this condition, with uh, tarsal tunnel syndrome. So uh, now we're going to demonstrate the uh, physical examination for the assessment of this condition. And we actually have a live subject with us here today. Now, those of you that are doctors out there, I know you've heard about the famous Mrs. Jones, the uh, uh, ubiquitous patient that everybody refers to as Mrs. Jones. We actually have uh, Mrs. Jones with us here today, and she brought her foot for us. So uh, we're going to review the anatomy first on uh, tarsal tunnel syndrome, and then we'll get into the physical examination maneuvers. So very quickly, remember that tarsal tunnel syndrome involves the posterior tibial nerve. And the posterior tibial nerve comes out about 10 inches proximal to the medial malleolus as it peaks out underneath the flexor digitorum longus and the flexor hallucis longus. So let's diagram that out and trace the distribution of the posterior tibial nerve uh, as it enters the foot. Okay? So the posterior tibial nerve becomes superficial here at about 10 centimeters proximal to the medial malleolus, which is right here. So our landmarks for tarsal tunnel syndrome include the medial malleolus here and the medial aspect of the calcaneus here. So the posterior tibial nerve becomes superficial here at about 10 centimeters from the medial malleolus. And then it continues down and about two centimeters proximal to the medial malleolus, it gives off its first branch, which is a sensory branch. This is the medial calcaneal nerve. And the medial calcaneal nerve comes down to provide sensory innervation to the skin region on the medial aspect of the calcaneus. Now from there things start to get pretty interesting. The posterior tibial nerve then continues down into the ankle and then it dips underneath a piece of connective tissue and the connective tissue spans the distance between the medial malleolus and the medial aspect of the calcaneus here. And it's about this wide. And this is what we refer to as the flexor retinaculum. So the posterior tibial nerve then approaches the flexor retinaculum and it disappears underneath the flexor retinaculum. And we can demonstrate that by showing that the, the nerve discontinues there and then it emerges on the far side of the flexor retinaculum. Now within the flexor retinaculum, this nerve gives off at least three branches. It gives off a branch known as the inferior calcaneal nerve, which then encircles the calcaneus and provides sensory distribution to the bottom aspect of the calcaneus. This is where tarsal tunnel syndrome can reproduce and simulate the pain associated with plantar fasciitis as it produces pain in the medial aspect of the heel and here at the medial calcaneal tubercle. So patients will tell you that when they step down and they step on these delicate nerve endings that are already sensitized here, that causes them heel pain, many times is misdiagnosed as plantar fasciitis. Then the posterior tibial nerve gives off two other branches. One is the medial plantar nerve, and the second is the lateral plantar nerve, which then proceed below on the plantar aspect of the foot to innervate structures uh, on the plantar surface of the foot. And we'll go over 
uh, some of those structures here in just a minute. Okay, so our physical examination procedures involved with tarsal tunnel syndrome are going to mostly revolve around identifying and locating uh, any type of space occupying lesion that can either compress the posterior tibial nerve from above or can compress the posterior uh, tibial nerve from below and squish that nerve uh, between the bony structures below and the flexor retinaculum above. So uh, the first step in the physical examination for tarsal tunnel syndrome is inspection. Inspection. So let me ask you, what type of things would we inspect for? What would be some things that would lead you to believe that indeed uh, there could be compression on the posterior tibial nerve in this region of the ankle? Well, how about a varicosity of a vein? That could cause compression on uh, the posterior tibial nerve. How about a ganglion? How about hypertrophy of any of the tendons that pass through uh, the tarsal tunnel? So anything that could occupy space uh, and cause compression is something that we're going to uh, look for. We're also going to look for skin changes, and skin changes could suggest long-term uh, trophic uh, dysfunction uh, of the posterior tibial nerve. So here we are looking back at the medial aspect of our uh, drawn up ankle here and we're just inspecting for any skin changes. I don't see any skin changes. Looking for any obvious uh, lesions, defects, deformities, anomalies, bone overgrowths, bone spurs, hypertrophy of any of the tendons that pass through here. And by the way, let's draw those tendons in. Immediately passing behind the medial malleolus, we have the tendon of the tibialis posterior the tendon of the flexor digitorum longus and the tendon of the flexor halogus longus. So hypertrophy of any of those tendons can occupy space in this tunnel and cause compression uh, also on the posterior tibial nerve. But we don't see any type uh, of space occupying lesion here. So we then proceed to palpation. Palpation. Well, we're going to palpate for the same types of things. We're going to palpate for any lesion, any varicosity of a vein, any lipoma, any ganglion, uh, any hypertrophy of these tendons. And in the case that we find any of those, the examinee, in this case Mrs. Jones, will tell us. So let's just poke around here and see what Mrs. Jones says. Any pain? That's very tender. Right there. At that point. As is that. Pain? Yes. Very tender and very somewhat painful. Okay, so we have a report of pain here, but in the absence of any true objective findings such as a jump sign or withdrawal reflex, so that's uh, what we would consider to be an equivocal finding. <clears throat> uh, next physical examination maneuver that we want to do uh, involves percussion. And uh, there is a percussion test for the posterior tibial nerve. You know it as Tunnell's tap also used uh, for the assessment of carpal tunnel syndrome, cubital tunnel syndrome, and other nerve uh, lesions. So to perform Tunnell's maneuver, we want to tap directly over the course of the posterior tibial nerve throughout the entire region. So to perform that maneuver, we evert the calcaneus and then simply tap along the course of the nerve looking for any shocks, pains. That's, that's tender right there. Got one there? Mm-hmm. Any yes. shocks? Yes. Shooting pain? Yes. What do you got? It's mainly centralized right there. Right there. At that point. 
Okay. Okay, so that would be considered <clears throat> an equivocal finding. A true positive objective finding would create a shooting pain uh, along any of these distributions along with a reflex withdrawal by the examinee. That would be considered a true positive objective finding. In this case, we would say that the findings uh, are mostly equivocal. Uh, the next physical examination maneuver involves range of motion. And because the posterior tibial nerve is not involved with any of the muscles that move the ankle, we're not concerned about movements of the ankle, but we are concerned about the ability to control the muscles that move the toes. So specifically, we have the abductor hallucis muscle here, which is innervated by the medial plantar nerve. And then on the outside of the foot, we have the abductor digiti minimi, which is innervated by the lateral plantar nerve. So to test those muscles and the range of motion that they control, we ask the examinee to splay their toes and hold the toes wide open as far as they can. And we assess the integrity of here the abductor hallucis, and that has good muscle tone and good bulk to it. And she's able to hold her toe against resisted abduction. That's good. And then the same thing for the abductor digiti minimi. And we assess the tone and the bulk here of the abductor digiti minimi. So hold the toe out. Don't let me push it in. <clears throat> and that's good strength. Hold out. That's good strength and good bulk of the abductor uh, digiti minimi. A couple of uh, orthopedic tests that we then uh, want to do. One is the Durkheim's compression test, and this is a test similar to what we do with uh, assessment for carpal tunnel syndrome. And we simply take our two thumbs and apply sustained pressure over the posterior tibial nerve with fair pressure. And if you see my thumbs, they're applying fair pressure there. And we would sustain that pressure uh, for as much as 30 seconds. And that's painful. Got pain? Mm -hmm. Yes. Where? It shoots down to the, around the bottom of my foot, my ankle. Excuse me, my heel. Pain? Yes. Worse? No, not the same. Okay. And so the examinee, Mrs. Jones, reports an increase of pain uh, along these various distributions with sustained pressure. So that would be considered a positive Durkheim's compression test. Then uh, we simply want to do a couple of range of motion maneuvers on the ankle. And uh, just uh, by way of philosophy, all movements at the ankle, such as dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, inversion, and eversion, all increase pressure within the tarsal tunnel. So any or all of these positions can provoke an already sensitized nerve uh, here in the tunnel. So we would begin with sustained and passive dorsiflexion and ask our examinee if uh, this reproduces the pain. No, it, that does not. Nothing? No. Nothing? No pain. Okay. So she's quite clear that that uh, feels pretty good. So then we would go to full passive inversion. And you'll notice I'm inverting here at the calcaneus with strong overpressure. That produces no pain. Not worried about it? No. Feels fine? Yes. Okay. Then I proceed to heel eversion, fully stretching uh, the flexor retinaculum here. That produces no pain. Produces no pain.
Nothing? Yeah. Okay. So she's clear that that maneuver is fine. So these test maneuvers. That produces pain. Pain there? Mm-hmm. Along the flexor yes. retinaculum? Yes. The tarsal tunnel? Yes. Okay. So we have a mixed uh, finding here. There's a report of uh, reproduction of pain with one out of four uh, of the movements at the ankle. So, let's review. With the physical examination for tarsal tunnel syndrome, we're concerned with space occupying lesion or any other type of physical exam maneuver that in increases uh, pressure within the tunnel. Now, true positive objective findings for this test would include a couple of things. Number one would include uh, reproduction of the examinee's symptoms, which generally consists of pain and or numbness tingling along the distribution of those medial and lateral plantar nerves and then also some sort of a uh, withdrawal response or some sort of an apprehension uh, response such as a flinch, a withdrawal, uh, a hunch, some sort of evasive action uh, away from the painful stimulus because if you know that if you've ever hit your uh, funny bone nerve uh, immediately there is an evasive action and that's the true objective finding. So in this case uh, our examinee provides us with mostly uh, equivocal findings. Now if we'd have done these same maneuvers uh, six months ago or so uh, probably would have been worse because she is recovering uh, from tarsal tunnel syndrome. So uh, those are the physical examination maneuvers uh, for tarsal tunnel syndrome and uh, this is Dr. Perry Carpenter. I look forward to being with you uh, on our very next video.